all right, so Jordan Peterson, you guys know, he recently moved to the Daily Wire. Actually, recently is not the right term. He's been there for a while now. He's probably been there for years now, right? But before he was at the Daily Wire, he positioned himself as, look, I'm just the dude that's here to try to help disaffected young men get their shit together, right? Here's all these rules for life and make your bed and fucking be clean and shut the fuck up and be a gentleman and dress right and all this. Look, and that version of Jordan Peterson, yeah, when he talks about stuff like that, I find it interesting. You know, I think when he brings up various different psychological schools of thought and um, gives practical life advice, I got no problem with that whatsoever. In fact, in some ways, I would say that had a positive effect on a number of people. And these are like the OG, old school Jordan Peterson fans, that version of Jordan Peterson, right? But then over time, he became more political and more political and more political. And then when he went to the Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro's outlet, he really let that freak flag fly. Now, did he always think these things and he just sort of let it let it fly, let it rip when he went to the Daily Wire? Or is it a recent pivot to appeal to the Daily Wire audience more specifically? I don't know. Frankly, I don't care. But the fact of the matter is, there are many issues where he is just so fucking out of his depth, it's embarrassing, right? You want to go talk about Jung? You want to go talk about Freud? You want to go to tell people to wipe their ass? By all means, dude, I'll cheer you on as you do it. When you start talking about politics... And you start talking about foreign policy. Now you're on my turf, son. Okay? Now this, this is what I do now. This is what I'm well-versed in. So he comes out and he says the following. The pro-Hamas protesters are run down. By the way, I already have an issue. I already have an issue. The pro-Hamas protesters are run... Okay, he's talking about all the pro-Palestine protests on college campuses. Let's continue. One, delusional, naively compassionate, childless women... Two, men who hope to prey on them by pretending to be allies. Three, resentful leftists pushing a self-serving victim-victimizer narrative and willing to be useful idiots for... Willing to be useful idiots for... What the fuck? Resentful leftists pushing a self-serving victim-victimizer narrative and willing to be useful idiots for it, I guess that's supposed to say. Four, a psyops spearheaded by Iran, terrified of the Abraham Accords, and supported by the Russians and the Chinese? Oh! Okay. All right. All right. All right. Let me calm down. Let's go one by one here. Let's let's break this down. First of all, just to the, the gist of what he's saying, here, let me explain to you why these protesters are doing what they're doing. I, somebody who doesn't agree with them at all and doesn't like them at all, will tell you where they're coming from. Okay. Jordan Peterson is the guy who always used to go around saying like, bro, if you want to be a serious intellectual, you have to steel man your opponents. You can't straw man them. Straw manning is intellectually lazy, it's stupid, it shows you're not really good at arguing. You have to steel man and then engage with the steel man to show that you're good faith. This was his position. So I responded to Jordan and said, Mr. I steel man arguments refusing to acknowledge this depraved violence against civilians might motivate some backlash. So why are the protesters actually protesting? You don't have to ask me. They released documents showing why they're doing what they're doing. What do the documents show? Okay, we want the universities and the schools that we're affiliated with to divest with Israel. Why? Because they're an apartheid state, they're an ethno state, they're a theocracy, and they're doing an ethnic cleansing and a genocide, and here's all the evidence for that, and this is why we believe that. So divest from Israel. Hey, Biden, stop arming and funding Netanyahu to do this genocide and ethnic cleansing, and just stop the genocide. That's their position. This isn't fucking rocket science. This isn't hard to figure out. If you go to their own documents and read it, you walk away going, okay, I understand where they're coming from. So what's at the core of this? Guys, it's this. This is at the core of this. There's been 43,640 Palestinians killed by Israel. Of those, 39,675 are civilians. We're over 90% civilian death rate. You think maybe... That's going to lead to some backlash. In a world that made sense where people have basic human decency, that's going to lead to some backlash. Nearly 16,000 children have been killed, and over 10,000 women have been killed. There's over 81,000 injured people. 141 journalists have been killed by Israel, which makes it the most deadly conflict for journalists in history. By the way, they're killing a lot of these journalists on purpose. They've even targeted some journalists' families. Two million people are displaced. By the way, there's another way to say that. Two million people are homeless because of the Israeli bombing campaign. There's 2.3 million in Gaza. Two million are homeless. 136,700 homes have been completely destroyed. Almost 300,000 homes have been partially destroyed. 179 press headquarters have been attacked. 459 schools have been attacked. 2,340 industrial facilities 
have been destroyed. That's like places of employment. 667 mosques attacked. Three churches attacked. By the way, what happened? I thought you were Mr. Christian. You're okay with a far-right, theocratic, ethno-state attacking churches on purpose? 931 healthcare professionals have been attacked. Of them, 371 have been killed. 560 have been injured. 332 healthcare facilities have been attacked. 29 hospitals have been attacked. 76 clinics. 227 ambulances. You get the picture yet? You get the picture yet? 203 heritage sites have been attacked. You know what that means? These things that have been standing for thousands of years, these marvels, these structures, these human engineering feats have been destroyed. 214 civil defense workers have been attacked. 45 killed, 169 injured. There's now 3,000... Everybody talks about the Israeli hostages being held by Hamas. What about the 3,140 Palestinian hostages being held by Israel? By the way, incredible detailed evidence of severe torture on a regular basis. In Gaza, they have to do surgeries on children where they amputate arms and legs without anesthesia. They've put handcuffs on uh, Palestinians that are hostages in Israel and they've had to amputate the hands and the legs because they've left them on for months at a time and cut off the circulation. Jordan, this is why people are protesting. This is why people are protesting. Because this is depraved. This is immoral. This is unethical. This is inhuman. The correct response is to protest. Now look, the fact of the matter is, Jordan Peterson was very clear from the beginning in one of his books. He said he basically doesn't think anybody should protest unless they have all their own shit in order. Get your house in perfect order before you go out there and protest and try to change the world in any way, shape, or form. So, I guess, in, from his perspective, if your room is messy, or if you didn't make the phone call to the dentist to go get that appointment first, then shut the fuck up and accept the genocide happening. With our money, in our name, by our ally. Let's go through it one more time. First of all, they're not pro-Hamas protesters, they're pro-Palestine protesters. There's a Wall Street Journal article that smeared and lied these protesters. The establishment is smearing and lying about these protesters, calling them pro-Hamas, calling them pro-Hezbollah, saying they're funded by all sorts of nefarious actors. Nonsense. Zero evidence for any of it. And you know that. So he says they're pro-Hamas protesters. They're delusional and naively compassionate childless women. There's a lot of men out there, too. There's a lot of men out there, too. And the women are not delusional. And they're not naive. They're having the correct human reaction to watching children get carpet bombed. Men who hope to prey on them by predicting to be allies. In other words, the men who are at these protests just want to fuck the women. It's that simple. It's not that you could actually be morally driven to try to stop a genocide. It's just that you're horny. Again, Mr. I steel man my opponents. Uh, resentful leftists pushing a self-serving victim-victimizer narrative. No, in this instance, Jordan, there is a victim-victimizer narrative. We are repeating and what is, what exists in reality. This is the reality. Palestinians have no rights whether it's in the West Bank or in Gaza. Their lives are fully controlled by Israel. Their airspace is not their own. Their water is not their own. Israel controls the amount of water, the food, the fuel, the electricity that goes in there. And by the way, they cut it all off in a total siege of 2.3 million people, even though there's 30,000 Hamas members. They say we're going after Hamas, but they cut off the food, the fuel, the water, etc. to 2.3 million people. What is wrong with you? There's an actual victor victimizer, victim victimizer narrative at play here. And for you not to see it means you're fucking blind. And he calls them useful idiots. I got news for you, buddy. There's only one useful idiot in this conversation. And it ain't the pro-Palestine protesters. It's all the fucking ghouls who are out there slavishly defending Benjamin Netanyahu as he commits war crime after war crime. And then finally, he lies. Say, ah, oh, this is Iran. Oh, but by the way, he says, they're terrified of the Abraham Accords. The Abraham Accords helped lead to October 7th. You want to know why? The whole point of the Abraham Accords was, let's go around the Palestinians, have Israel make peace with other Arab nations, as a middle finger to the Palestinians to say, you don't matter. The status quo is going to be there forever. You're always going to be oppressed. And that's one of the straws that broke the camel's back where Hamas said, fine, we'll attack. That and moving the embassy to Jerusalem. So Trump's policies, which he champions as a oh, peace in the Middle East, it led to more violence in the Middle East. It was a horrible idea. But the idea that Iran or the Russians or the Chinese are behind this, fucking total bullshit. Total fucking bullshit. And we all know it. So... Get over yourself, man. Look, don't, don't go out of your depth. Talk about people wiping their ass and cleaning their room and give them some life advice or whatever. But, you know, your whole shtick of intellectual dark web and we have the conversations nobody's willing to have, that really crumbles. The second a contentious issue comes up and you immediately resort to smearing everybody who disagrees with you. I mean, this is fraud shit. Total fraud shit. Absolutely pathetic. And uh, by the way, just so everybody knows, 
it wasn't that long ago that uh, that Jordan Peterson interviewed Benjamin Netanyahu on a show, and he got massive backlash from his audience. People were like, what the fuck are you doing? This is a war criminal. Like, what are you doing? Would you, like, casually interview the Grand Ayatollah and throw softballs down the center of the plate? Of course he wouldn't, but for Israel, he'll do it. And then remember at the beginning of this, he said, give him hell, Netanyahu. Well, he did. He sure did give him hell, Jordan Peterson. He sure did give him hell by carpet bombing all of those babies being a tough guy. Stop embarrassing yourself. All right, guys, that's the show. I love you all very much. You know the drill. Everybody, please click like, click subscribe, all that fun stuff. Click that bell icon so you get a notification every single time a video drops. Um, that's all I got for you. You can support the show on Patreon below or tip with the thanks button below. Remember, I never talk to an advertiser. I'm very proud of that fact. You guys help fund this show from the ground up. I love you, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop, and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.